the only way I was gonna get to fly a, a jet was to get a job. Because I'm a big school, overgrown schoolboy. And who the hell, if you've got a chance to do it, I mean, and... Uh, Difference between men and boys, <laughs> the price of their toys. <laughs> yeah! Hockey ho! Almeida que say hockey ho! Yeah! Entre as inúmeras paixões dele, duas são opostas. Espadachim, ele diz que esgrima é a arte de ocultar o seu próximo movimento. Cantor, ele sabe que a voz é um instrumento que expõe. É impossível se esconder da plateia. Movido a curiosidade que é, a inquietação dele o formou também como piloto de avião comercial, mestre cervejeiro. Bacharel em História, palestrante e, claro, para poder contar toda essa vida, escritor. Vocalista de uma das maiores bandas de heavy metal da história, o Iron Maiden, ele está lançando seu primeiro álbum solo em quase 20 anos para alegria de roqueiros em geral e metaleiros em particular. É. E ele abre essa nova fase aqui no Brasil, é... É com enorme prazer que a gente recebe o cantor também conhecido como Sirene Humana de Ataque Aéreo, Bruce Dickinson. Welcome, please Thanks, have here. a seat. Wow, miles yeah. away. I hear, I hear it's better we don't exchange germs, shaking oh. hands. No, it's so okay. Just... I've got plenty of germs to exchange no, with you. No, you have I to can't. take care of your, of <laughs> your yeah. voice. It's, it's too late now if I get the germs, don't worry. Yeah, you're already <laughs> exposed to Brazilian germs and yeah. dengue. Mexican germs. I've had germs Mexican. from all over the world, mate. It's yeah, great. You, you look good, man. You look good. <laughs> Listen, at your beginnings, you were called Bruce Bruce. Oh, yeah, that was a, that was a practical joke by a... a, a a guy that was managing me at the time. So uh, it was to do with a joke that was from Monty Python uh, about Bruce's and Australia. Anyway, he wrote my first paycheck as Bruce Bruce. I thought it was really funny because I couldn't cash it at the bank because it wasn't my real name. <laughs> so I was just like, you asshole, you know, what are you... <laughs> so anyway, there you go. That was, no. that was how it was called, Bruce Bruce. And then, uh, but actually, my middle name is Bruce. I see. So, what's your first name? My first name is Paul. I see. So, Paul Bruce Dickinson. Yeah, that's right. So that's my that's my full name. But uh, every, everybody at school called me Bruce, so I kind of became yeah. Bruce. You know. We were born uh, in the same year, 1958. Oh wow! Well, yeah, it's a good year. It's a good vintage year. Glorious year in Brazil. Yeah. We were world champions for the first time with it, Pelé it, on football. Really? Yeah, Pelé, 58. Yeah, wow. Sweden. Yeah. Uh, but listen, when you're 65, you're about to hit the road. What are your <laughs> preconditions? Uh, nothing really. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, uh, I don't make any. Uh, You know, nothing, nothing weird or wonderful about about being 65. I mean, the band are all uh, less than half my age. You know, so uh, we just do. We we all do, we all do the same thing. We share the same dressing room. Uh, we eat the same food. We share the same same germs. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's cool. But listen, uh, compared to Iron Maiden's theatrical staging. Yeah. Your solo act is like a musical stripping. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, we, uh, we, uh, um, there is actually a lot going on on stage, you know, because we've got these two risers for the drums, the keyboards, we've got timbales, I've got a theremin there as well. We've got screens, so we're putting more and more stuff on the screens. So it, it, it is slowly growing into a show. It would be an understatement to call Mandrake an album. It's a whole project. It's a graphic yeah. story. How, how would you introduce it? Um, <clears throat> again, it, 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 started out, uh, as, it started out as a seed, <laughs> like most things, and then it grew. And as But it which grew... Which seed was that? Uh, the seed was just uh, 
that I was going to have a story which went through the album. But actually, once I planted that seed, it grew into two separate trees. One was the album, and I said, well, actually, we don't need a literal story with the album because it is its own musical adventure. But there are similarities with the comic. Uh, we're now into uh, episode three is going to be out shortly. It's a three-year project. At the end of it, we're going to have a 450, 460-page uh, graphic novel uh, at, the, uh, at the end, uh, a whole world, a whole universe that we built with the, with the, with the comic. I hear you're a great um, admirer of Willem Blake. Yes. It, it, has he inspired Mandrake anyhow? Oh, I mean, he's a, a constant... Uh, aspiration, if you like, uh, to be inspired by him. Because, aiming high. Yeah, yeah, just aim high. Yeah. And because and, uh, he, was, he was the original difficult artist, you know? He was a guy who, when he was alive, people thought he was difficult. They didn't understand what he did. He died in pretty much never made a penny. Um, people destroyed his art because they didn't understand it. And the, the, the bits that survive are incredible. So <clears throat> um, it's only later that he was rediscovered. And so many expressions that we have, you know, um, the, door, the, the, the band, for example, The Doors. The Doors is, 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 is named after, you know, the, the Doors of Perception, which is William Blake. Yeah. Uh, the expression as above, so below, all these, like, esoteric phrases all come from Blake. And of course, his his art is, um, is is elemental. You know, it's incredible. Listen, Bruce, your voice is unmistakable. And uh, who first called you a nurse raid siren? And um, well, this is a weird one. You see, it was actually an insult. Um, well, so the first time they called. <laughs> <laughs> First time they called those French painters impressionists yes. was also an insult. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when I first joined Iron Maiden, um, somebody wrote a letter uh, saying, uh, I hate the new singer. His voice sounds like an air raid siren. And uh, Rod, the manager, he went, oh, that's great. The human <laughs> air raid sirens. So he turned it into like, this thing. You know, that's why he's a manager. But you know? listen, do, do you do regular exercises? How do you practice to, to keep your voice as fit as it is? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you don't? I don't. No. And you had a cancer, a throat cancer. Yeah, I did, yeah. Some time ago. And, yeah. and the voice was not... not <clears throat> I had a great... Um, I had a great... Uh, cancer doctor, oncologist, and um, so he knew, uh, you know, what I did for a living, obviously, and it, and he it did admit to me that he actually was a Rush fan, not uh, Maiden. But I went, okay, it, that that's okay. Just, Don't just, boycott just, this. Just just, <laughs> just get rid of this thing for me. So uh, yeah, I mean, I I <clears throat> I did the Iron Maiden album, Book of Souls. With this thing growing in my uh, in my throat, wow. and and um, it was uh, what was it? Oh, I was uh, stage three uh, cancer, so uh, I had a three and a half centimeter tumor in my throat, in my tongue, and then two and a half centimeter in my lymph node. So people said, "Oh." It, it was only a little thing. He caught it early. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it's a ping pong. It's a, it's a ping golf ball. ball. Yeah, 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 ping pong ball. ball. Yeah, 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 growing there. So, um, yeah, they got rid of it with uh, radiation, a lot, uh, and chemo at the same time. So it was pretty harsh on the body, but got rid of it, you know. And your voice is there. Yeah, it's... Um, it, 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 uh, I mean, uh, it took about 10 months... I, I, before it, before I actually really decided, okay, let's try it out. For the It's about self-confidence as well. Yeah, because they, they, you know, if you try and sing too early, bear in mind your whole throat, all the muscles, everything. You basically you've been had your head in a, a microwave for like two months, 
um, and uh, all the mucus members, everything is angry and it all needs to calm down, yeah. you know. You've I, never smoked? No, I never smoked, no. no. I, uh, I mean, um, that, that's, I, mean I know, helps. you know, some singers, some singers who do, but I, I, I never have, no. First time you, you, you were in Brazil, it's now almost 40 years ago. Yeah. Uh, Rock and Real One. Let's have a. 1985, a yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bash in the head. Yes. Yeah. Self inflicted one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> One, two, oh. Yeah, that's the rules. <laughs> You know, your audience love, they, they love blood. <laughs> blood, sweat, so, and no tears. So, so, so I, uh, um, I really loved that, that, that guitar that I had. I really liked that guitar. And I actually, uh, when I hit myself in the head, I ran off because I was like, I was pissed off with the, the monitor sound. I actually smashed the guitar in half over the monitor desk because I was so pissed off. That was my favorite guitar and I fucking broke it. And then it. you never played I broke guitar? It. I, I mean, you're supposed to smash your guitar on stage. You know, like, like the you know, who? So yeah. anyway, so then I went back and I was like, ah. And um, I was trying to like clean it with a towel and this member of the road crew came up and he went, no, 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 no. The manager has seen the film. He said, don't squeeze it. Can you make it bleed some more? <laughs> it's looking great. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that, so, yeah. That's no, show that, business. No, yeah, that's show no business. business. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, a little a head, head wound when you're really hot, always, it looks a lot worse. Have you is. ever bled yeah. uh, no, didn't have fencing? To have, didn't have to have any stitches no, or anything no. like that. No, all but right. uh, you are a gifted fencer, uh, fencing is your sport. Yeah, it is. Have yeah. you ever bled uh, fencing? Um, no, I mean, yeah, you get abrasions and cuts and things like that, uh, little ones, but no, nothing. You fell in love with the sport? You were a teenager. Yeah, I was uh, like 14, yeah. 14. Yeah. And I hear you had lessons with the same fencing master that taught Errol Flynn. Is that uh, so? Yeah, what was, I mean, like, uh, like twice. Um, the guy was so old. I mean, <laughs> um, uh, his name was uh, Ralph Faulkner, and he taught Errol Flynn, uh, Basil Rathbone, um, Tyrone Power, all these people. Wow. And he actually was a double, stunt double for Errol Flynn and uh, stuff like that in, um, in, in, in a, a lot of things. He had his own fencing studio. I mean, he was this legendary awesome. yeah. Holly, old Hollywood guy, and he was still teaching Ne at nearly 90 years old, um, you know, it was, uh, and I just, I found this place and I thought, I'm just going to have a 20 minute lesson, 15 minute lesson with this guy just to say that. To have a good story to tell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But listen, I quote you, a real fencing do is all about what is hidden. And uh, singing would be the exact opposite full exposure of oneself's yes. emotions. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, um, uh, th there is an, an element where a, a duel is, um, uh, is a collaboration because it takes, takes two people to, to make tangle. a boxing match. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there is that to an extent, but of course it is about being... Uh, It is about concealing your real intentions until <laughs> until you you hit the guy, you know. And why are you, you uh, 
on the stage, you are like you oh, have yeah, to, you, you're you wide open. defenseless. I, mean, I, mean, I know you, you mentioned about being a um, uh, when I was a, a commercial pilot for a lot of years. Uh -huh. I, again, that is something that's hidden. So your skill is completely hidden because all the people who are sitting in the seats care about is that the plane takes off and then it lands and they get off and they, they think they, want, they, they don't want to know what happens up front except that you take off, you land and they go home. They only want to know if something goes wrong. Exactly. And, and, and then probably they don't, they don't even know if something goes wrong because that's your job as a pilot to make things sure things don't go wrong before they go wrong, you know. But, but you could have remained a, an amateur pilot. Why did you uh, want to, you know, Boeings and big jets? Big jets and things like that. Because I'm a big school, overgrown schoolboy. <laughs> and who the hell, if you've got a chance to do it, I mean, and... Uh, Difference between men and boys is <laughs> the price of their toys. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also because, uh, you know... Uh, Whilst I, you know, it would be lovely to have as much money as John Travolta, uh, the only way I was going to get to fly a, a jet was to get a job. <laughs> so, yeah. Listen, uh, you started singing in the church. I, well, yeah, I, it was not because uh, out of choice. Uh, uh, you, you know, where, where I went to school, you had to go to church. In fact, when I went to boarding school, You, you had to go to church on Sunday morning. They had their own church. And you went to church on Sunday morning. If you missed it, uh, they beat you with sticks. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, until your ass bled, you know. Nice. Thank you, God. Yeah. You know, Education, yeah. 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 And, and but but the same vicar that beat you was the one that you have to sing. No, no, they, it was a different one. Yeah, oh, it was uh, earlier on. He was actually the, the the crazy thing about this particular vicar was he was deaf. So yeah, he was deaf in one ear, I think, because he was in the. This is the one who said that you sang well. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, he deaf? was deaf in one ear. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he made a mistake, and that was just you know. No, I think he, he got it right. There's a meaningful verse from a Brazilian singer and poet that says, "The toilet is the altar of every drunk yard." When you first met your idol, Ian Gillan. Oh yeah. Was that the altar you ended up in? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I was. Uh, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> he, uh, uh, he, we were. I was in a band called Samson, and Ian was like my big hero, you know, idol and everything. When I was like 18 years old, 19. So I'd done my first album, like ever, in a studio with the with these guys, and we were. Um, listening back to it and uh the bass player of ian gillan's solo band was the producer so we were all there in the room and uh as i said i, I you know i don't smoke but everybody in the guys in, in Sampton were yeah we were, they, they, they smoked a lot of dope um and, and it was like the weird stuff that you sprinkled on on tobacco stuff you know um hash yeah it was hash that was it so Anyway, so we're all sitting there and we had like two or three beers upstairs. We came back down to listen to the record and they're passing this thing around and they give it to me. I'm like, yeah, 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 okay, what, what is this? After I, three yeah, or four pints. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, uh, so then Ian walks in, Ian Gillan walks in, I'm like, oh my God, you know, and he sits down and, and he says, hey, and then he's listening to it and he says, He says, so, who's the singer? I went, oh. And he goes, yeah, pretty cool, man. Really good. I went, oh. And then I just thought, oh, my God, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> and and I, I ran out, and I was in the toilet. I my head down the toilet for about 40 minutes until he, he came and found me and dragged me out, wiped all the sick off my face, put me in a taxi and sent me home. And, um, and he reminds me of that story every time, every time we've met. When <laughs> you know? was the first time you saw Deep Purple live? When I was with Iron Maiden. So, I so this I, was around? Uh, probably when they got back together with Perfect Strangers. So I'm going to show off now. I, I told them that I was going to show off. 
I saw Deep Purple live on March the 6th, 1974. You lucky sod, Civic yeah. Arena no. releasing Burn. Amazing. So, yeah. so we... Um, we saw them in, I think it was the the KB Hallen in Copenhagen. Um, and we we were playing there a bit later. So Purple were there with the Perfect Strangers tour and we went on the side of the stage. Now I toured with Richie Blackmore in Rainbow with Samson, with Graham Bonnet on vocals. And in fact, Richie gave me one of his smashed guitars, signed. So he smashed up a guitar and on stage, which he did like every night, and then gave it to me, signed. He said, to Bruce, from Richie Blackmore, a guitarist. Wow. And I was like, wow. So my first wife stole it. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, you know, yeah. what the heck. You know, I don't know what Wives. she did. I don't Wives. know what she did. That's life, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so... Um, <laughs> but no, it was it was incredible. And then of course I, I also toured with Ian Gillen in his solo band with Samson. So I toured with Ian Gillen in his solo band. Then I toured with Richie Blackmore with Rainbow. But I never played with Deep Purple. But I did play with John Lord uh, on his concerto album. And then finally ended up coming to doing some shows around Brazil and. Uh, and, and actually doing some purple st songs with an orchestra, you know. So it was, it was really, it was nice. It was cool. But I've, st you know, I, I don't suppose we'll ever tour with Deep Purple now, you know. But uh, you know, I'm gonna show a bit of your one of your secret identities, the one of a commercial pilot. Oh. Let's let's see the man on duty. Where am I? All the usual niceties on the airplane. It's a non-smoking flight and keep your seatbelts fastened any time you're at your seat, just in case of any unexpected lumps and bumps. We're not actually expecting any lumps and bumps today until probably just before we start our descent into Sao Paulo. Uh, sit back, enjoy the ride. Thank you very much. Oh, that's from Fortaleza. Ah! Oh, we're taking off from Fortaleza. Yeah. Northeast of Brazil is incredible. Yeah. That's the critical... The most Do critical want. time to um, lift off. Yeah, that's the time when you've got to make a decision to go or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a combination of, uh, of shots. So that's us taking off in from Cardiff Airport uh, when we went across to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, but the, uh, the other bit is from Porto Alegre. But you, you know... You, you quit? You, you don't longer fly or the big planes? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I have a... Um, I, w I worked for an airline from 2000 until 2011. Uh, then, unfortunately, the airline went, went, uh, went broke, so, you know, I was out of a job along with 500 other people, but I had another job, so that was OK. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and then in 2013, um, I got talked into starting an aviation business, which was a maintenance business. We also started an airline. So we, I was actually operating an aircraft out of Djibouti in East Africa and also out of Italy, and we were flying around. And we did that till 2017. I did a little bit of flying with that as well but mainly it was just an, another business so we closed that one business down in 2017 and now i've got a now i've got a a, a garage for airplanes so we maintain 737s and uh, airbuses wow and i have about 150 mechanics and engineers full-time so um yeah it's uh it's 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 doing well, you know, so I'm really pleased about that, you know. Listen, you once wrote that one of the reasons uh, behind Maiden's uh, longevity, longevity was the gradual organization of the band into an unplanned triumvirate. Yeah. Um, yourself, the founder Steve Harris, and the manager Rod Smallwood. Orchestras are manifestedly 
um, undemocratic. The yeah. conductor is the tyrant, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Is the same thing applies to a rock and roll band? There's no democracy? Uh, ultimately, there's, there, there, ultimately, you can't have a team as a democracy. A football team is not a democracy. You've got to have a manager, you've got to have a captain, you've got to have a game plan, and people have got to stick to the game plan. Now, you can disagree, you can have discussions. You can have rules. Yeah, but, but, and you can have arguments. But, you know, because when you're passionate about something, you have arguments. Um, but at the end, the coach decides. Uh, yeah. Has although, a final word. Yeah, you know, and, uh, but you can sometimes have areas where... Uh, you know, the coach will go, you know what, I'm not in charge of the physiotherapy department. If the guy in charge of the physiotherapy department tells me that I need everybody to do this, 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 that's what we're going to do. So, um, you know, we, we, with Maiden, we, you know, we, 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 div we divide things up and things seem to work quite naturally now. Organically, like if Steve really is crazy about going to do, I'm going to do this, this, this for musically. I'm like, okay, you know. Uh, so me and Adrian will write stuff, and if it fits, great. If it doesn't, not a problem, you know. So we live with each other, um, and it's quite cool. It's, yeah, it's, actually, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, it is a democratic uh, way of. It's a toll. It's it's a, it's a it, it's a it's learning to be tolerant. That's it. Of each of each other. That's it. Um, basically, because we're not the same. We all have different interests. All have different, slightly different attitudes. We were put together as a band. We didn't all know each other from childhood or anything else like that. So I would probably never have met Steve Harris. If I wasn't the singer in Iron Maiden, I would never have met Nico McBrain if he wasn't the drummer. But we've all grown together and we've ended up as a kind of family because we tolerate each other and we look after each other and we care for each other. Which year were you in Sarajevo? Uh, 94, Christmas 94. of 94. I was there in 94 as well. Ah. Yeah, and I was amazed that the main gesture of, of res act of resistance was to try to lead a normal life, yes. as, as normal as possible. Yeah. And I, I remember that Susan Sontag was someone, they staged hair, and then yeah. came your, your show. Yeah. yeah, and then we did the show. Was there. that the spirit of tolerance? Ab ab well, absolutely, because... Um, You know, nobody, um, nobody needed to be reminded um, that war is a bad thing, right? Because they're in it. They've been living in it for longer than the siege of Stalingrad uh, in Sarajevo. Uh, so our arrival there was basically normality. It was like there is life after this awful situation. You know, um, and the outside world can come to Sarajevo uh, and not talk about, you know, let, I mean, we didn't stand on stage uh, in Sarajevo and go, let me tell you, war is a bad thing. <laughs> they know, <laughs> you know, they're getting shot every day. They wanted to be escaped from that. Yeah. And that's why um, when people say to me, uh, oh, you know, should you be going out preaching some kind of message. I'm like, no. You know what? People know that certain things are good and certain things are bad. What we can do is offer an escape. That's a good thing. You know, art is an escape. Uh, a lot of people that go around preaching political messages don't do it I don't believe they do it 50% because they, they want to feel important. What they should be doing is just giving people the choices in their minds 
you know, um, I have you know, to agree with you. Rather yeah. than wagging their finger at people, lecturing people, lecturing about people, what they it's, already know. It's yeah. kind of arrogant, you yeah. know. Listen, I want I want to know if you ever visited Brazil apart from touring professionally, and what are your favorite places here? But let me just make a quick break. A gente vai fazer um intervalo e volta em instantes. <laughs> A gente está de volta com Bruce Dickinson, a lenda do é. metal, dos, dos, dos ares, como a gente viu, das espadas. E é. ele está fazendo essa turnê agora no Brasil. O que é especial sobre esses metal lover people? Um, well, I just love the fact. I, I mean, I love the fact that they love what I what we you do. do. I mean, you know, um, and also that. Um, I mean, I tell you what, I I love about well. It, and and Brazil, in particular, right? Because and and this is something that's it's not exclusive to Brazil, but every audience in Brazil I've ever played in front of, uh, very passionate, but they listen, and some audiences they they get very out of control and 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 quite often quite aggressive and ah, like that like that but but like they, they're like aggressive like it's really like angry energy and brazil i don't get the angry energy what i get from brazil is the energy that's it's the passion there's joy it's like yeah 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 you know and that's why for me brazil is You know, I say it's the best audience in the world. Then everybody else gets pissed off, you know, because they go, well, why not? We're the best audience. But, you know, we won't tell them. <laughs> we won't tell that anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you expect in, 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 to, to come back in Brazil this year? Uh, you're now in Brazil, and yep. then you come back before December. Yeah, we come back. We, well, I'm, I'm back with Iron Maiden. Obviously. Iron Maiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, ba yeah. I'm back at uh, two shows in Morumbi. So uh, that's... Yeah, that, that's going to be good. <laughs> It's part for choice, as yeah. they say. Yeah. And what, so you, you know Brazil, apart from professional touring, you go, you had holidays in Brazil ever? You I'm, I never, never had a holiday um, in, in, in Brazil. Although, um, if I ever get a chance, if I come here for something else, I'm go. Have we got like five? So, I mean, I spent, um, I mean, um, our, my wife and I are, I mean, our, I think probably our favorite hotel in the world is the Copacabana Palace in Rio. It's an awesome place. Yes. It's so chilled out and, and everything. And they're really nice and friendly. And it's like, you know, and. Uh, Madonna's there now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I, I, I got them mixed up. I thought it was Maradona, but then I realized it was like, you know. <laughs> no, but, he's, yeah, yeah. he's in the cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, you know, maybe. Yeah. I, thought, I thought, oh my God, Maradona's doing a show. He's come back to life. <laughs> Two and a half million people. Brazil's you know, incredible. But, but no, but no, no, no. Madonna's taken up football, you know. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, but my friend. Um, I got an invite to the show. I mean, I can't do it, obviously, because I'm, I'm You're here. doing your I, show. I'm, I'm doing my show. Yeah. But, but I, I, a friend of mine, uh, Jonas Ackerlund, the video director, uh -huh. is, is filming it from a... He's doing... I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be probably some Netflix thing or whatever. So he said, hey, he said, I'm down here with Madonna. We did our first two shows at the Whiskey in uh, Whiskey A Go Go in, 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 in Hollywood. Uh, with like 500 people, a club, right? And, uh, and, and Jonas was there. So Jonas has seen Iron Maiden over 40 times. And uh, he does all the Ramstein videos, and now he's doing Madonna, really super talented guy. And uh, I said, you've stolen my favorite hotel. And he went, yeah, sorry, they've got the whole hotel. It's insane. Um, It's an incredible hotel full yeah, of stories. Yeah, but, it, but, you know, there, we, and I love it because I can sort of just go and, kind of chill out there. Um, I would love to um, go and do some stuff in, 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 the, in the Amazon um, uh, to, and spend some time up there. It's, it's an experience. Yeah. It's it, like it, you, you see the whole thing in a different perspective after you've been there once. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, so um, that's on the, 
that's on the on on, on the bucket list you know you're um, most welcome man yeah please come back always yeah listen you vocês querem cantar alguma coisa do iron maiden para eles alguém canta aí alguém faz o um barulho aí hey bruce thank you so much bruce that one as well <laughs> Valeu, gente. Até a próxima. Bruce Dickinson. Yeah. It's very nice talking to you. Yeah, it's great, man. Honor. Thank, Thank you, you so much.